Hi folks, welcome once again to Marta's Sci-Fi Seminar. This week we are still preparing to work on the draft of possibly a first novel, possibly you've already done this once, but you're thinking these video videos would be fun to watch as you take a second run at things. Um, but the idea behind the video series, the sci-fi seminar or the sister series, the magical mystery class, is to give you the tools you need to draft and revise and then make publishing decisions about a first novel roughly over the course of a year. We're still in the kind of preparatory stages. There's the little inspiration series I've done, um, and now we're going to talk about brainstorming, okay? And we'll have lots of other things to talk about over the course of the year. I'm not just going to say, draft your book and abandon you. I will be checking in on each channel on alternating Fridays, basically, give or take. Um, so each channel will get updated twice a month. So this is the sci-fi seminar update for mid-April 2021. Um, brainstorming is something that I think a lot of writers talk about. I don't know how it works for a lot of people. Um, we tend to talk about drafting, we talk about outlining, which we will be talking about in another video yet to come. Uh, but brainstorming itself is incredibly valuable and I think maybe underused, uh, especially among writers who already have the chops to feel like, yeah, I'm gonna make a book. Um, brainstorming is writing down anything and everything you think might be relevant to your book, not in any order, not in any way that you expect to be terribly coherent, but just as a means of beginning to capture the kinds of things you think you want to do. Um, lines of dialogue that occur to you. Ooh, I need to put that in the book. Characters. Oh, yeah, right. I really want this character. Uh, the type of book you want to write. Science fiction is a big field, like a Wow, subgenre after subgenre after subgenre. There are people who read and write nothing but military sci fi. There are people who read and write nothing but space opera. There are people who read and write nothing but hard sci fi, nothing but soft sci fi, or sociological science fiction, or science fantasy, or paranormal fantasy, or urban fantasy or sword and sorcery fantasy. See, because then I told you on the channel, I'm splitting mystery and science fiction apart. I'm not really splitting science fiction and fantasy apart when I talk about them. Um, it's, you can put, there is an umbrella term, speculative fiction, that you can put it all under, tends to be kind of an academic term. Um, and I'm not really a fan of it because I think it puts some assumptions on the genre that don't belong there. Um, so, brainstorming. Let me give you some examples of things you can do when you're brainstorming. You can do something called a free write. That's when you just say, I'm gonna think about my book and I'm just gonna write down anything that occurs to me about my book. At that point, you're not trying to write a scene. Uh, you're not trying to write a character monologue or dialogue. You're just writing a, you're just dreaming on paper about what you think you want to do. Um, so that's a type of, that type of free writing is a way of brainstorming about your book. Uh, I'm also going to feature a couple of other recommended titles here. This is Natalie Goldberg's Writing Down the Bones. This is Natalie Goldberg's Thunder and Lightning. I also have a copy of her book Wild Mind that I love, but I have misplaced it, so you're just going to have to look at these two for now. Um, one of the things that I think Goldberg does 
better than anybody else is talk about free writing, give examples of free writing, uh, and set you up with your own free writing practice that can run alongside a more focused writing practice like a novel. Um, Goldberg focuses specifically on timed writings and on using writing prompts for those timed writings. Her most famous, most popular, most used, uh, as she says in her workshops, I've not had the pleasure of attending, but I love her, um, is simply a 10 minute timed writing using the starter or the prompt, I remember. And then you just write for 10 minutes, I remember. Her work tends to be more focused on autobiographical writing, but again, I think autobiographical writing as a means of developing some good writing skills that can then serve you for other projects. Um, probably good at this point to discuss what a writing prompt is. Uh, working from a prompt, which is something that Goldberg does in her method, it's also popular in the Amherst workshop method. Um, writing from a prompt is um, writing from any starting point that you give yourself, or if you're working with a group, any starting point that that same group is working with. Some great brainstorming prompts. I want my novel to, and then write 10 minutes about like what you want your novel to do. I want my novel to make people feel like they're really in space. I want my novel to make my readers sit on the edge of their seats and turn all their pages really, really fast. I want my novel to make a statement about global warming. You know, those are all things that might come up in a free write. Obviously, if you're writing for 10 minutes and the idea behind a timed writing or a free write is to write nonstop, you don't edit, you don't look at it, you don't read it as you're writing, you just go, 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 go. Uh, there are people who really feel like you need to do that in handwriting. I'm not one of them. I'm, I'm totally wedded to my technology. I do everything at the computer. My handwriting's awful. Um, so I do, I do use free writing um, in my practice, especially when I'm trying to decide where to go next. Um, but I do it on the computer, and in fact, I use a treadmill desk, so I'm walking and working and chewing over ideas, and I find that extremely useful. Uh, so free writing is one way of brainstorming, just keeping a notebook with you, or I use the Notes app in my phone, just as you're moving through your day, as you're doing things, as you're thinking about things you wanna write, and it may not all be related to your novel, you know? One of, the, one of the great ways that we writers keep ourselves from doing our novels is that we have lots of other ideas that demand our attention. Oh, well, we've got these three short stories we need to write before we write our novels. Oh, well, there's this really important craft essay we need to write before we write our... Uh-uh. If this really is the year you're writing your novel, then those things can get set aside. But the best way to set them aside, make a note of them. Brainstorm them down. You don't have to do anything else. They can just be a little scribble on a note somewhere, in a folder, in a file, whether that's electronic or paper. That's a great way to listen to all those little voices uh, without letting them run the show. Uh, it works for me. I use it a lot because, oh, especially when you've hit a trouble spot in a big work, it's very tempting to say, oh, phew, I need to set this aside. I need to work on this littler thing over here. No, if you've committed to working on your novel, work on your novel. Just make some notes on this other stuff. You may even find that some of those notes and bits end up finding their way into the novel. Some people uh, use brainstorming to do elaborate character studies. They write whole biographies of their characters. I've never done that. 
Um, I think it's a neat idea. I think uh, I would feel like I was writing a biography, a nonfiction piece rather than a fiction piece, a, a sort of weirdly fictional nonfiction uh, if I was doing that. I prefer to figure out, okay, this is where the book is going and here's the character and gosh, you know, do I, based on what I know of this character, does that seem reasonable for this to happen? Um, if yes, let's go on. If no, hmm, maybe I need to rethink that. How does the action, how does the character fit together here? Um, so, and when I brainstorm, I ask myself those kinds of questions, um, especially if I've got a scene written and I'm not ready to go back and edit yet, I'm still drafting, I will just make a note in my phone in a file that I keep, just ongoing notes about the novel, or right now I'm working on a shorter, I am working on a novella that will be a prequel to my two novels. Um, hey, I like that scene, I want that scene, but I wonder if there's something else that needs to fit between that scene and some of the material that's gone before. You know, that's, that's also a form of brainstorming that then goes alongside the beginning of that drafting. But again, if you all are still figuring out how to go forward with your novels, then brainstorming is a tremendously useful tool for just getting some really basic notions on paper. Um, we are over the 10 minute mark, so I'm just gonna say in closing, I did say as I made recommendations on the channel, I would try to feature queer writers and writers of color, so I will say Natalie Goldberg, somebody I would recommend under any and every circumstance when we're talking about free writing and brainstorming. Um, just gonna highlight the fact that Nat is a lesbian um, and so is a queer writer who has given so much to so many different writing communities because the work she does isn't limited to one kind of genre or another. It's not just work that literary fiction writers use. It's not just work that genre fiction writers find useful. Um, Natalie Goldberg's work is something all of us can find useful. Um, she's terrific. I hope she's one of many uh, craft books. What Her books are some of many that you pick up. Um, and I hope that you're having a great time reading for inspiration as you begin brainstorming your sci-fi fantasy paranormal novels. Yay!